Hey, this is Jeff from United Campus Ministry, and I just want to say thank you to First Presbyterian Church in Wilmer. You guys have blessed us for all eight years I've been out here, uh, so I'm so grateful for the help you've given me and the assistance and the prayers and just you, you being a partner with us for these eight years I've been out here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how the year went, but we're also going to talk about what we're going to do in the future. Uh, there's a lot of stuff up in the air right now, uh, but just want to say thank you for your help over these years and thank you for your faithfulness in helping us serve the Ridgewater community. All right, so the school year starts every year. We do a welcome day the first Thursday of the year. And this year, we handed out about 125 gift bags. Now, the gift bags include uh, Bibles. They include trash bags. They include uh, toilet paper. They include uh, contact information, schedule of events, pens, and then contact information for some area churches. And we just try to help out the students who are new on campus or returning to campus to get acclimated with what we do across the street, but also to know that the community of faith cares about them. All right, so then uh, the other obvious thing that we do is meals. Um, the meals fluctuated this year. Uh, there would be weeks where we'd have 200 to 250 students twice a week. And then depending on what time of year it was or if there were field trips or if there were internships or things like that, it could go down to about 125. You just didn't know all the time unless uh, every now and then we got blindsided. But uh, in both ways, either having too much uh, food or too little food, uh, but we never ran out. And that's just the provision of God and his faithfulness. Um, Diane from your church and a number of her her friends have blessed us so greatly over the years. Uh, taking that one meal a month allows me to be able to sit down with students and to talk and to hear their stories. And I could tell you story after story after story of students that have been impacted by that meal ministry. And so that's the obvious, uh, one of our main draws over here. Uh, those weeks where you're seeing 250 kids twice a week, it's insane. It was so insane that we we're even talking about expanding the building. But obviously with COVID, uh, that kind of changed our plans a little bit because everything's up in the air. Um, keeping on to fall schedule, we did an event. They had a fall festival that coincided with the week of Halloween. Well, rather than dress up for Halloween, uh, what we did was we wanted to be a light on campus. So we used our Christian club that we have students in to get access to the school. And we gave out thank you notes. We wanted to be a light in the community. So we gave out 50 thank you notes that kids could either write to their parents, to their friends, or to professors. And, and we just trust that they did that. There, we saw a number of kids that did. I just saw them fill it out right at our table and they were going to hand deliver it themselves to people that had made an impact. Um, as we continue into spring semester, what we saw was the same, the same thing going from fall semester until about spring break. Um, around spring break, Everybody kind of knew that there might be some changes coming. Um, spring break got extended as a result of the COVID uh, pandemic. And then uh, eventually the school year uh, just got scrapped as far as in-person uh, students and faculty. Uh, if you could do it online, that's how they did it. Um, and this impacted everyone. All these kids were scattered. It was really hard unless I had contact information for them, uh, phones, um, social media, things like that. It was really hard to follow up. A few students got benevolence from us uh, because they just couldn't work. Their job got cut out from underneath them. So we filled out some rent for them or we helped uh, provide like new car batteries or things like that over the course of the school year. But then especially once COVID hit. Um, so the end of the year was really a struggle as far as interacting with students. Took a couple of kids to the food shelf. Uh, we really utilized our um, blessings box that we have on site here. Uh, but it, it was just really hard to end the school year that way. And it was really hard to end the school year that way because you've built up so many relationships with these students and then they're kind of in the wind and you just want to see it to the end. So it was really hard. Uh, moving forward to this next year, 
We don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet. Uh, the school is going to be at a diminished capacity as far as student attendance. If they can take the classes from home, they're going to do that. But there's just certain classes you need to be on site for, for labs and for instruction, for like physical things that the, the technical college element of it does. Uh, so we're, we're not sure how we're going to do the meals yet. Uh, Chaplain Amy from Lutheran Campus Ministry and I are going to be meeting really soon to talk about how we're going to do that or if we can do that. We're thinking possibly bag lunches or something we can just hand out. Uh, the cafeteria is not going to be open on site at the school that I know of. So this is going to be a need, but we're not sure how we're going to meet that need or how frequently we're capable of meeting that need. Um, it's just going to be up in the air for a little bit. We're going to talk and brainstorm to the best of our ability. We might do some trial and error, and we might we might have to adjust on the fly here. Uh, but that's that's just life right now for everyone, not just us here at the Ministry Center, and we understand that. So that's also why we're so grateful for churches like you guys supporting us, loving us, and, and helping us out. Um, if I could be so bold as to ask for prayer in a couple areas. Uh, just keep keep supporting us. Uh, this is a big deal. We have a mission field that constantly is renewing right here in our community of the next generation. We are we are planting seeds so that other communities and this community can see trees grow. All right. So we're just really investing in the future and we're doing it through faith. We need to see the body of Christ be the body of Christ in the lives of kids that have a lot of questions, a lot of skepticism, and maybe not the best experiences with church. They Maybe they just have experience through uh, just through their parents' faith or, or someone else that has told them things, but they haven't really explored that on their own, and this is their first time being on their own, faced with changes and transitions. Uh, so... Be in prayer for that. Keep supporting what we're doing. I'm so grateful for it. Um, the other big need we have is prayer as far as what do we do with the building. If we can expand, I would love to be able to do that, but maybe it's just not realistic right now. Uh, and then I need board members, man. I need people to oversee me, hold me accountable, have visions with me about how to proceed with this ministry, and just have suggestions uh, and encouragement. Uh, realistically. So I need board members. We've been asking for that for years and it just hasn't worked out uh, as well as I had hoped. All right, that's a lot. This video is longer than what I thought it would be already, but thank you so much. God bless you guys. And if you have any questions, contact information is on the following screen. God bless. Bonus content, I almost forgot to include that uh, my daughter turned one on June 21st. Uh, so here's some cute footage of her uh, to close out the video. <laughs>